What is up, everybody? It's your boy Nerdicane, and I'm doing a review of Protector Number Two. Uh, there's a video I did to Protector Number One. It, I did like it, and I was gonna hold out uh, to really give an opinion until I got issue two. Uh, I got issue two for three ninety nine. You get a whole lot of comic book in this. Uh, I will give credit where credit is due. A lot of these people I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I, a lot of these artists and, and people who produce it, I really don't know who they are. As I said in the other one, it has sort of a an art style that is not exactly for everybody. Uh, I like it. I, I like the colors. I like the way it's laid out. Um, there are There's like a battle scene. There's a fight scene later in this book that's a little bit confusing. Um, the warriors kind of like blend in together like the general the warrior who's the general can easily be mistaken for another warrior who's just like a grunt and it's there was a moment where i'm like was is that his is is he dead or is he a lot you know it's later you'd, you'd see this i do recommend this it's kind of um you know it's future dystopian it's a trope that's done a little too often now in comic books but this one's done really well there's an old saying that to the uninitiated, technology and magic are indece indiscernible. And that's sort of what you're dealing with here. There's this mech. It's high tech. Um, I don't know if there's a person in it or a, a person's uh, consciousness has been downloaded into it. But there's sort of like a system, an automated system in this mech. And then there's a person, uh, a personality inside of the mech as well. It somehow runs off of blood. It needs to eat uh, to, to keep itself going. I'm sure it'll, it doesn't really explain that this in this one, it, which is good. It's good not to explain everything all at once. Uh, <clears throat> but you have a very interesting dynamic right here with the mech and the protagonist where she still thinks that this is a god, that this is a demon come to blah 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 the shmer with the things and and the the mech is trying to figure out when what's going on how long have i been out what the situation is and it's kind of cool because it gives you little hints as to to what's going on and you you pick that up slowly and it's 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 going to build and i think it's going to be something really cool um like i said the colors are really this is this is like almost at uh at dusk so you see this, the sunset reflecting off of the mech and you see the perspectives and you see this, this scale. You get a good scale of, of this mech when it's fully upright, uh, which is very cool. And I do like the colors. The colors are very vibrant and sort of, uh, I don't know, I guess this is like Western Midwest territory, but it's, it sort of almost has like a Southwest feel to it. But as I see, you know, in the, in the previous video, it kind of showed that it gave this this breakdown and a little bit of history of the world after the story, which I thought was cool. And it sort of showed, okay, these people came from Asia and they migrated across and they picked up, you know, along the way they picked up uh, Inuit culture and then they settled in the Hudson Valley. Um, so there, there's little flashes of like culture that we see now. And this is, as you should do with something set in the future, you uh, hypothesize the evolution of the culture, what influences it would pick up uh, along the way, how that would extend. And that's, that's good sci-fi. That's what you should do with sci-fi, which I think, um, I think Blade Runner was kind of one of my favorite things where it, just the city, how the city was, it was a West, I think, I'm pretty sure it was a Western city, but it had an Asian feel to it because uh, it had been very much integrated. I think I can't remember what city Blade Runner was set in, but uh, it was San Francisco or New York. I can't remember, but uh, you see that, and that's what you should be doing with with these uh, with stories like this set in the future. All too often, especially nowadays in twenty twenty, we see futures like like Trump destroyed everything. Am I right? And then that's all. It's like undiscovered country. I've never seen, I, I didn't say this in the, I don't think I ever did a review of Undiscovered Country. I think I read it and I was like, oh, this is so bad. Undiscovered Country is, has a lot of talent on that staff that put it together. 
but it's like all the smartest kids in the class got together and they echo chambered each other so loudly that basically what they produced was an in joke that nobody else really gets. That's what Undiscovered Country is, but uh, it's kind of cool. It sets up that they're kind of figuring out what's going on. There's, I do recommend this. Uh, I'm interested to see issue number three. There's kind of a showdown between there's there's these mechs, like I said before, you know, technology being indiscernible from from uh, magic. These people think that these mechs are demons or, or gods, and you see kind of a showdown between the two, and you don't see the, you don't, it doesn't actually show the fight, it shows the kickoff of the fight, the first blast, and then it goes to the aftermath, where the, the guy who's the first knife, who is kind of the general of, of the, the force that's heading there to destroy it, they come to the aftermath, where they see all of his troops are destroyed, and this thing, this entity that they think is a god or a demon, has been destroyed as well, and they kind of realize that they're they're up against something really, really big. Um, but yeah, they, they finally get to a city where, uh, sort of a resistant city, and there's a fight there as well, and it sort of leaves off with... You know, I'm not going to spoil I'm not going to spoil any of this, any more of this, because I want you to, to read it. And you kind of see in this fight as well, they have kind of a... The people... I can't remember their names. The, the people who are uh, the protagonist force, they sort of have this thing, and they keep doing it where they cut themselves before battle. They go into battle, and they cut themselves. And it's sort of like the Gurkhas, where if you know much about the Gurkhas, the Gurkhas have this knife, and I can't remember what it's called, they pull it out, and it has to... Their, their belief is that knife, the spirit of that knife, has to have blood. So if they pull it out, it's definitely going to be a fight, and there's definitely going to be blood. And if there isn't any blood, they have to cut themselves uh, to give the, the knife blood. Um, go look up. It's a really cool, it's a really interesting history of, of the Gurkhas. Uh, the, the Japanese in World War II, the Japanese who were just very, very aggressive and very brutal as, as a military force, they feared the Gurkhas because of, of their tactics and their ability to fight in the jungle. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to spoil any more of this. This is, I didn't really count the pages, but this is definitely bigger than your average comic book. Uh, and you get a lot out of it. This is like, this is three ninety nine. dollars You get a lot of comic book. If Marvel could do this more often, where you pay three ninety nine for a book and you just get, look at, I mean, look how thick this is. That's thick with two C's. And it's interesting. It's, it's provocative. It's, uh, it's a type of writing that makes you, that reveals enough, gives you enough in information to make you think, to make you wonder. And that's what good sci-fi writing uh, should do to, to its reader. It should make you think and wonder about that world. And that's why, uh, you know, worlds like, universes like Star Wars caught on back in the, in the Lucas days and why it doesn't catch on now, because there's not a whole lot of mystery. There's not a whole lot of, of lore, side lore. There's these little strings that you could pull on. Um, it's just not there. But I do recommend this. It's kind of, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, I like the colors, and I think everybody who's working on this is not a psychopath. But uh, I give a thumbs up. Go recommend it. I can't wait for number three. I can't wait to, I, I'm interested to see to learn more about this world and learn more about this story and how everything is going to unfold. And that's what a comic book should do. It should make you want to buy the next one. So to all the people involved in this, good job. Um, to, oh God, I hope I'm not getting your name wrong. Comic Book Sal, who is my newest subscriber, uh, I actually got a, I got a notification that you subscribed, which I don't, I, I try to like give a shout out to everybody who subscribes to me because I'm still like a small YouTuber, you know, I still have a small channel, uh, but I, for some reason, I don't get the notifications every time somebody subscribes to me, so if you subscribe to me and I don't give you a shout out, that's why, and thank you, I, I still thank you for, for your time and, and um, you know, listening to my voice and listening to my opinion, tell me what you guys think in the, in the comments, if you're picking this up already or if you plan to, um, I guess move the needle-ish. 
uh, uh, we're not doing that anymore. They, the professionals basically made move the needle into uh, a metaphor for they're a Nazi. So they, uh, good job. Good job destroying that way to sell, to help sell comics. You friggin' maniacs. But uh, thanks for your time. You guys go out and have a good day. Good day. Bye.